Hey friends, here we are again today. Today, just another random uh, box at our fingertips. Let's see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. This box number 78 and weighs about 75 pounds. So let's see, let's just start at one end and see what we find. How to buy gold by Kennedy Green. Okay, so a book about uh, gold. We'll have to review the stats on what the prices are in these books. There should be a list at some point that I add to the video, so you'll see that on the site. The New Families, Youth, Communes, and the Politics of Drugs. So this is one of these books from like the 1970s that goes into drugs, the drug culture, and everything like that. 1972... 1972 basic books, okay, so that's kind of interesting for people that want to know more about that subject. Oh, here's a beauty, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It's an early 19th century book, I believe, and it is for surely illustrated and uh, broken down into into verse, so uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, a work of art, actually more than anything else, I guess. It's the first edition in this in this edition. Of course, it's not the first edition of The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, but this one came out in, 19, in the early 1990s. Here is the Dred Scott decision of March uh, 6th, um, 1857. This was one of the preliminaries to the, um, the Civil War of the, of the states starting to secede from the Union. And let me see here. Oh, Herbert Hoover, The Challenge of Liberty. Very good uh, condition with the dust jacket. And uh, let me see, 1934 by Herbert Hoover. I have a book somewhere by Herbert Hoover that is autographed. Now, this particular one is Scribner's. And you see that A there? The A usually designates that that is the first edition. They managed to do that without having to say first edition. I have one that's, I have a book that's very similar that is autographed. This one is $50, not autographed. Okay, zooming right along. I hope you, hope you find something in here that you like. You know, I have, um, I have all kinds of books. If you watch enough of these, you're going to see every kind of book come up. <clears throat> the last three minutes conjectures about the ultimate fate of the universe. I love books about cosmology and fate and, you know, um, spirituality and stuff. The Feudal, Feudal Society, Volume 2, Social Classes and Political Organization by Mark Bloch. And, um, let's see. They can't have any illustrations. Huh? Oh, there's an illustration. What the heck is that? The Lord of the Hills becomes the Lord of the Plain. I have no idea what that means. You have to read the book and see what kinds of things they're referring to. Historian and Scientist by Gaetano Salvamini. Uh, and um, let's see, when did this one come out? An Essay on the Nature of History and the Social Sciences. Harvard University, 1939. And it appears that that's the only issue, the only edition, maybe it's the only edition that there was for, for this particular book. But it's nice, in a nice dust jacket and everything, for the collectors that are out there. The Legend of Quincibald, Q-U-I-N-C-I-B-A-L-D, by Leonard Bacon. A little mm, stain there on the front cover, I guess. So what is The Legend of Quincibald? You're asking me, I'm asking you. 1928, in Roman numerals. Oh, and this one is, well, it happens to be signed by the author anyway, so that's always nice to have a signed first edition, as it says. Where was only grief and strife, she sowed lilies in my life. May they prove a diadem for her head, who planted them. Okay, that's a nice, nice little pump. So this is poetry by this guy, huh? And it's not illustrated. There's a lot of dialogue in here. I don't know, we'll have to kind of research that and find out a little bit more about it, what that book is all about. Space and Time in the Modern Universe by a PCW Davies, so that's a book of perhaps cosmology. The structure of space and time lies at the very foundation of both physical science and our perceptual experience of the world. Fundamental con concepts and stuff. Okay, so 
So it appears to be a scientific effort of some kind, huh? Cambridge University Press. Cambridge. First published 77, reprinted 1977. So it's the it's the second printing of this particular book. And I don't usually show, you know, but you can see these books are usually in very good condition. If there's if there's anything wrong with them, I would take off the dust jacket and show you. What else we got? Rosemary Leaves. This is a, a, a very interesting uh, uh, cover with the gilt, you know, and the cloth, and it's signed by uh, Claire B. Vaughan, mm, December 20, 1873. But let's see, like, when did this book come out? Oh, and there is the author. And uh, by, okay, Mrs. D. M. Jordan, Cincinnati, Robert Clark, 1873. So uh, we have a book of poetry here, basically. We'd have to kind of really dig into it and see what some of the, uh, what some of the high points and maybe low points are in this book. But it's in, it's in very good condition throughout. Kind of, it would look nice on somebody's shelf, huh? Here we go. The Spirit of 1906. Well, this must have something to do with California. Here is an image of a, a seal of uh, the grizzly bear, which is one of the symbols of California, the state of California. And um, it's uh, perched on a uh, hillside. It looks like maybe Telegraph Hill or something in San Francisco. And with an arrow in him, he's been, he's been shot with an arrow and suffering. And that, of course symbolizes uh, the San Francisco area after the 1906 earthquake. With compliments of the author, The Spirit of 1906, published by the California Insurance Company, San Francisco, 1921. And uh, this is a story of this guy who, um, who uh, his company was on the brink of disaster, of course, having been hit by an earthquake, but he saved it forward, let me see. I, m I remember the first few lines. Pretty good. Well, from the time when Nero played the violin accompaniment to the burning of Rome, down through the ages to 5.15 a.m. April 18, 1906, and up to the present date, the San Francisco disaster is the most prominent recorded in history. It was the greatest spectacular drama ever staged and produced the biggest heap of the damnedest, finest ruins the world has ever seen. Well, you know, I, I, I grew up near there, like 40 miles away, so I'm always interested in looking at curiosities like this refer about the city and the earthquake and other things. So this is very business-related, evidently. I'm going to put some of these back in here because they're piling up. Let's see. That. How to play the Go game. How to play Go game by Haruko Kambayashi. Kambayashi. And this one is Toshido, Tokyo, printed in 1961 by the author, Exclusive Distributors, Japan Publication Trading. And uh, if you ever wanted to find out how to play the Go game, there it is. That's kind of, you know, looks like somebody would be interested in that. Now, what else do I have? The new families. Ah, Carl Jaspers, The Future of Germany. So this is right after the Second World War. Jaspers was one of the philosophers there in Germany. So he's, he speaks of Germany's future and whatnot. George Trackall. Um, I, I wish I knew more about George Trackall. This is... Um, I am uh, sorry to say I do not know much about this book. Toward the objective Im Towards the Objective Image, Poems to 1912, The Discovery of a Style, Poems of Late 1912 and Early 1913. Toward the Demonic Image, Poems of 1914, Trackle Posthumous. Oh, he died in 1914, so he might have died in the First World War. I'm just guessing that he might have died in the First World War because those years seem to relate to the, uh, to that great 
you know, four year long battle. A very nice condition though, I mean, I, I, I love these handsomely bound books. The Yeats country, William Butler Yeats, of course, was a great um, Irish um, poet and uh, he uh, epitomized Ireland and he wrote of the little people and and all sorts of other things and he also ventured into mysticism and metaphysics and uh, was part of I believe he was part of the Golden Dawn which was uh, quite interesting I don't know much about that particular book The Almanach and Chet Petite Encyclopédie Populaire de la Vie Pratique. So this book, which needs a little bit of binding, it's a 1940 edition, came out in France, and it came out actually during the first year of France being involved in the war with Germany. Well, actually, they, um, they um, surrendered. They surrendered by the start of 1940 because they just could not fight Germany alone. And uh, so this is a very interesting little almanac. It is written in uh, French, of course, but you know, you see there, there might be something kind of interesting in here. So here's the almanac part of it, and here I think is some advertising, isn't it? Where's the advertising? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, a little bit of elder, little bit of advertising. But it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful old book. My goodness, they even have crossword puzzles. So this must, must, must be historically significant. All righty. So let's see. How far did we get? Did we get to the tale of the ancient mariner yet? We did? Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So I've done those. Let's see. Let's keep going in this direction. Saratoga Trunk by Edna Ferber. Uh, it's a novel. Here's one where they poked, they had this dust jacket, and then they made a hole in the dust jacket, and it's actually, it actually was a library book at one point, but why? What makes it interesting? Because the book is called The Prophet of San Francisco, Personal Memories and Interpretations of Henry George. The prophet is no mere clairvoyant or foreteller of events. He is one to whose soul God has spoken some urgent truth, new or old which men have not before conceived or have forgotten. By Will Hickman Morrison, New York, the Vanguard Press, 1930. And, um, I don't know. It's like, It all depends on if you're attracted by the subject of San Francisco in the 20s and 30s and um, who this particular philosopher was. So, getting near the end here. And here we have 13 Against the Odds by Edwin R. Emery. And this, I believe, I'm not going to jump into conclusions. Oh, these are people of, uh, okay, so who are these people? 13 Against the Odds. Mary McLeod Bethune, the Amazon of God. Richard Wright, native son. Charles S. Johnson, a scholar and a gentleman. Walter White, little David. George Washington Carver, Sweet Potato Wizard. That's the first one of these that I recognize the name. <laughs> it's George Washington Carver. Langston Hughes, Shakespeare in Harlem. Marian Anderson, Deep River of Song. W.E.B. Du Bois, Elder Statesman. Mordecai W. Johnson, Lord High Chancellor. Are th These people may all be black. Yes, they are, I believe. Joe Lewis, Champion of the World. And Paul Robeson, I know he's black also. Voices of Freedom. So this was by the Viking Press, 1944. And uh, what's the provenance here? This edition, so I don't know if it's the first edition or not. Viking Press, 1944. So typically, I've noticed that books that feature literature or biographies of blacks in America typically sell for big premiums. They're very popular. People collect them like crazy. Shakespeare in Harlem. Langston Hughes, and there he is. So anyway, so this might be an interesting book to, to look up and find out more about. Experiments in Flint Working by Don E. Crabtree, reprinted from the Journal of the Idaho State University Museum. Experiments in Flint Napping. Maybe you understand Flint Napping. I'm not sure I do. 
flint napping. Is that when you take a piece of stone and you shape it into a flint, you suppose? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, look. There's figures and things and whatever, so I don't know. We'll have to see. This looks like it's holding a loose collection. Oh, th that's what it is. Look, look. These are a loose collection of pamphlets having to do with the subject. So, yeah, I did look it up. This is exactly how it came in the first place within within this. From Pocatello, 1971. And here, my mind is numerical, oh dear, numerical methods of en in engineering by Salvadori and Baron, second edition. I, 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 I don't know what to say about this. This is out of my, you know, specialty. But as you can see, it certainly has a lot of math in there. <laughs> it's a lot of signs and pivotal points, central differences. It's math from one corner to the other. So if you want to take off a Saturday and just, you know, put, sh you know, put this in front of you and learn angles and cosines and stuff like that, you're welcome to it because here it is. Maybe you can use it. And is that it for that? Yeah, that's a 13, 13 men. And so, uh, so this is the contents of one box. It's just one, to me it seems like an average box. Um, there are no particular books that stand out, you know, to me personally, because they're not on subjects or authors, you know, that I'm really keen on. But I think there might be something out there for you. So have a look. And if you want more information about any of these books, please contact me. And uh, all these books are um, available. They are all part of box 73. No, 78. Does that say 8? That says 78, right? Okay, good. So there we go. And it'll be here until next time. Next time we'll have a look at some other some other um, fine uh, load of books, 15 or 20 books or something like that, until we find something that you like. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot now.